So what is this Christmas in July thing all about? Well, its history is actually kind of hard to trace. Some say it started in Europe. Some say it started in Australia so they could celebrate Christmas in the winter. And others say it started at a girls' camp that was in North Carolina in the 1930s. No matter where the idea started, the idea of a white snowy Christmas, not that we have that here, it's kind of a fun way to satisfy the craving for cooler weather and holiday cheer that by this time of summer may start to sound pretty good. Well, Christmas is actually my favorite time of year, but it is also a crazy hectic time. And sometimes in the middle of all the busyness, of all the gift buying, and all the getting everything set for Christmas Eve worship, and the kids coming back into town, I can actually miss the most important aspect of the season. In the midst of this coronavirus, we've all been forced to slow down in some ways. I thought it might be a good time to reflect on what is ultimately most important, not just for a season of the year, but actually for our life. We look to fill our lives with so many things that we hope will bring us joy. We hope that will bring us hope. Is there more to Christmas and to life than all the trimmings and the decorations? We chose this theme not to magically cool us off with thoughts of a white Christmas. But to help us realize that even though Christmas is five months away or so, we thought it'd be good to focus on that thing of unspeakable joy. That person of unspeakable joy. And on the only thing that can actually fill us with what our heart longs for most of all. So today, as we focus on unspeakable joy, we're starting the first of our sermon series on Choose Joy. As many of you know, I also love schmaltzy Christmas movies. I love watching the Hallmark movies with Jeannie and even a movie that I've seen three or four times. Even though I know how it's going to end, I still get a knot in my throat and I tear up every time. They're feel-good movies. And we've been watching the Hallmark uh, Christmas in July movies as an escape from all the news that's bringing us angst and worry. So today, we, we heard in our Bible reading that beautiful, almost poetic narrative of the birth of Jesus. But think about it. There are a lot of details there that are missing. The pain of childbirth, the filth and stench of a stable, the fear of a young woman giving birth without her mother or aunts or anyone around that she knew other than Joseph, her husband, who had never been through this either. There are parts of the Christmas story that we haven't heard yet today, too. We have the story of the Magi, the three wise men that we see in all our nativity scenes. And we know that they show up and they tip Herod off about the star. And in so doing, they incite Herod to actually massacre many young children. And part of the Christmas story, as we like to tell it, is the heartwarming account of the Magi from the East who visited Jesus and brought him their treasures. And, and yet there's the heart-pounding account of the Holy Family's midnight flight to Egypt for safety. What I'm getting at here is that the world that Jesus was born into, it was not a Hallmark movie world. It was, a hard, it was a world that was filled with political and social violence and unrest. There was a lot of uncertainty for people. But at Christmas time, we seem to do our best to keep things merry and to kind of create an alternate universe about silent nights and jingle bells. And please don't misunderstand, I love those songs and I love the festive attitude and the atmosphere of giving and, and joy that surrounds much of the season. But I want to point out that the power of Christmas and the power of the Christ child that is born into this less than perfect world and comes into our less than perfect lives with something that no one else can bring. For many people, Christmas is not this kind of sentimental and happy season and life is not just a bunch of candy canes and Christmas carols. It's not that Christmas just isn't that for some people. Their lives aren't that way. 
As I mentioned with the COVID-19, I mentioned last week that depression is on the rise and people are struggling with job losses and deaths and health issues. And at Christmas, as well as every day of the year, there are many people who face food inequities and struggle to keep food on the table and have to choose between food or rent. And there are others who this year, right now, are missing a loved one who's not in their usual seat. And grief and sorrow can follow people like shadows, not just at Christmas. Well, my guess right now is you might be thinking, hey, Bob, when you said this sermon is about unspeakable joy, I didn't think you meant that unspeakable joy wasn't you, you were go- weren't going to talk about it. And if that's what you're thinking, I want you to just hang on for a sec. The truth about Christmas is that it breaks into this dark and disturbing world. And that's where we find the hope. And that's where we find the light. And that's where we find the promise of joy. And it is in that truth that the reality of God is revealed in its fullness. God could have chosen to wait, to become incarnate, and to live among us when the world was stable. During reigns of benevolent peace, overflowing prosperity, and comfortable silent nights. But if that was what God was going to wait for, we would still be waiting. Because that lives really in only some dream world. Instead, God chose to live among us in the midst of terrible genocidal violence in the presence of overwhelming, inconsolable sorrows with an impoverished refugee family. In other words, God chose to become incarnate in, in the real world, a world that had predators and disasters and storms. This is the world that the angels we're announcing the Savior coming into. So this is what the angels meant. And, and, and listen to this verse once again. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to to those on whom his favor rests. This, this is the good news that brings us great joy. Because sometimes as we look at our world today and we think as terrible as our story is today, it is a reminder that God doesn't shy away from the evil the hatred, the darkness, or the pandemic in our lives and our world. These are the exact moments in which God chooses to be revealed, to live as Emmanuel, as God with us. This is the message of Christmas, the incarnation. Whether that message is told on December 25th or it's told on July 26th, it is a message that we constantly need to hear. It is a message that God is not waiting to come to us when we have our lives all sorted out and when we finally get our house organized and our house all cleaned up. It's not just a God who comes to us when we feel like we have faith that could move mountains or when we simply have a moment to breathe without hyperventilating in order to ponder the great goodness in life or when we simply take time to stop and smell the roses. No, the message of Christmas, it is actually a messy one. That God is present with us precisely when things are falling apart, when our heads are full of doubt or our souls are overwhelmed with sorrow when we're tired of hearing about rising ICU occupancy, arguments over face masks, wondering when the curves will flatten, wondering who might infect us or, 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 or will we be infected. God doesn't say to all the frightening and tragic situations of our life that I, I'm going to make them magically disappear. With Christmas and the Christ child, God doesn't take away what disturbs the world. God doesn't end all the senseless violence. And God doesn't silence the sorrow. But God promises to be present in the midst of it. Present and bringing us 
of all things, unspeakable joy. To me, this is both the most confusing and the most striking part of the Christmas story. In many ways, Herod's violence is expected. He is a madman with a long history of exterminating com competitors for his power. Even if those competitors were his close family. And so the Holy Family's flight to Egypt isn't that surprising either. Because see, these are stories, tales of the powerful embracing violence to maintain control and, and everyday people being caught up in it and fleeing it. These are stories that are repeated throughout our world. We hear those stories in places like Syria and Afghanistan. This tragedy in the Christmas story should only surprise us if we haven't been paying attention to the violence in our world that is so frighteningly common. But in the midst of that, there is this joy. To be clear, this joy is not exactly happiness, but still. How in God's name can joy show up in the midst of sorrow and terror? To be honest, I don't know. I don't know how joy makes itself known in the presence of darkness, but it does. It was there for the wise men. The joy when they finally found Jesus, it's a joy. It says it's more exuberant than, than, than I can remember in all of Scripture, actually. In Matthew 2, 7 through 9, we read about it. And it says, Then Herod called the, the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I may too go and worship him. And after they had heard the, the, the king, they went, after they, they had heard the king, they, they went on their way. And, and the star they had seen when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, it says they were overcome with joy. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Overjoyed is an overwhelming understatement of this translation. These, these magi, they were besides themselves with ecstatic joy. In the Greek, it says the magi weren't just overjoyed, but that upon seeing the, the star and finding Jesus, they rejoiced and ex with exceedingly great and boundless joy. I can't help but wonder if they were just as surprised as I am today to find themselves overflowing with joy when there's a time of darkness. Perhaps it was for that fleeting moment after the weeks and months and maybe years of planning the pilgrimage they glimpsed Jesus the very presence of God in the flesh. Whatever the case, there it is in the middle of the messiest, worst, most disturbing story in all the Gospels. Joy. Exceedingly great and boundless. That's the kind of joy that makes Christmas real for us in December as well as in July rather than just some schmaltzy feel-good symbol of a, of a movie of simple sentimentality. Because here, inexplicable, unspeakable joy meets sorrow, but it is not overwhelmed by it. Here, the hope of liberation meets violence of oppression, but is not extinguished. Here, the presence of the Christ child meets the worst of our world and chooses to live and chooses to love and chooses to hope. And I am still hopeful that this 2020 year will somehow turn around for all of us. But I also know, no matter what happens with our world, that God meets us right here in the midst of it. And I am just glad, I am thankful. I praise God today that God doesn't only show up when it's all sunshine and smiles, but that God is the God of a world filled with paradoxes and ambiguity, a world sometimes overrun with violence and hate and oppression, but in that we also find this amazing life and wonderful people that are bursting with hope and joy and peace and love. And I believe that in the incarnation, in God coming to earth in the person of Jesus, 
and, and taking our, on our human form that God wants to meet us right where we are, to live with us and to never leave us. Author and minister Frederick Buechner puts it this way. God says to each of us, here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things happen. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us. Indeed, this is the good news of Christmas. Go forth rejoicing with exceedingly great and boundless joy for God is with us. Amen.